Hello there. So, I recently was uh, recommended a book called The Dragon Conjurer, and I read it, and the person who recommended it to me, she said that it was, you know, just absolutely terrible, and I'd probably get a laugh out of it. And so I just, like, okay, added it to the list, like, you know, that happens fairly frequently with me. Um, but this one, I just listened to the audiobook of it, because, you know, I had a free credit on Audible. Hashtag not sponsored, because Audible hates me, I guess. And I got through it, and it is bad, yes, it, it is kind of funny in some ways, but it's not, um, it's not the worst thing ever. It's not as bad as it could be, because... The thing is, while yes, the Dragon Conjurer is stupid, I've seen this exact type of story about 10,000 other times. See, the plot is about this dude, he has a name, but I'm just gonna call him Protagonist Coon, and he one day discovers he has some crazy magic powers, and then he gets sent to this special secret school, which is about learning how to control his magic powers, and then while he's there, he goes on adventures, and he fights bullies, and a bunch of women start fawning over him. And for some of you, this is probably sounding very familiar. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. See, if you're at all familiar with anime, light novel, mangas, you know, that sort of thing, this probably sounds very familiar. Because Magic Harem High School is its entire own genre over there. And I've seen a couple of books do similar stuff to this too, because I mean, they're basically just trying to do Harry Potter, but add in some stuff to make it a little bit more adult, usually involving adding in some sex stuff, but never mind that too much. Like, let's focus on the anime stuff for now. See, there are just so many of these things. Like, so many of them. I don't think I could list them all off if I tried, but here's a couple. And Dragon Conjurer fits most of the tropes and cliches involved here to a T. But at the same time, it is a little bit better than uh, I would have expected it to be had I seen that coming going in. Like, okay, yes, there's a lot of dumb stuff. Like, for example, Protagonist Coon just has a harem for no reason. You know, there's no real reason for women to be attracted to him. They just, they just are. Uh, the world makes no sense. Like, why are they bothering keeping magic and all these monsters and everything secret from the rest of humanity? Like, what's... what's the point? I... I don't know. Like, it, it, this, this never makes sense, though, because, like, thousands of years ago, before humanity had modern technology, they could have just come out and ruled everybody forever. Like, it just... it just straight up doesn't make much sense when you think about it for more than a couple of seconds. Uh, Protagonist Kuhn winds up becoming the leader of the team that he's in after less than a week. Like, he's at this school for literally three or four days, and people just decide, you know what, let's make him the leader. He seems great. Like, he already has not perfect control of his powers, but very good control of his powers, and he's already defeating other bad guys who have been training for much longer just because he's that cool. Uh, at one point, he discovers that he can summon other types of dragons just by s speaking in other languages. Like, I'm not going to explain that too much, but he, he just decides, okay, what if I speak in Chinese for a minute and then another dragon appears? So he can just summon dragons like that. He's just... He, he's just really stupidly overpowered. Uh, and one, one thing I will say uh, right up front about this that makes it a little bit more mature uh, and a little bit better than other magic harem school things, particularly in anime, is that the characters actually have sex. Because, like, think about it. In... actually just in anime in general, but in particular this genre, the main character is surrounded by sex, like, they'll always go basically as close as they can to showing nudity without actually showing it, but he never actually has sex. Like, even in stuff like High School DxD, which is considerably raunchier than, uh, most of its contemporaries, which High School DxD is a very funny show, by the way. You should check that out if you haven't already. But e even stuff like that, they never actually have sex. And I I'm pretty sure a big part of that is just because Japan, despite what 
the porn would uh, have you believe, is still a fairly conservative country in a lot of ways. But yeah, in this, protagonist Kuhn just actually does have sex once or twice. And while I do hate sex scenes, I just, I hate reading them so much. And in fact, I really hate reading protagonist Kuhn describe all the women around him because he keeps talking about like luscious hips and stuff. And I'm just thinking, man, a man definitely wrote this. <laughs> like, this is prime men writing women material. But, you know, at the very least, it is just a thing that, yeah, adults do that sometimes. So it's it's just handled a bit better and a bit more maturely. Uh, plus in this, the characters are like college aged rather than high school age, so I don't have to feel weird about seeing a sexualized 15 or 16 year old girl. Like e even if she's animated, it's still weird to me. But with that out of the way, I kind of just want to talk for a minute or two about magic harem high schools and what exactly makes them work the way they do. Like, you know, what are the criteria that make them that way? Uh, so number one is that protagonist Kuhn has to be a dude, you know, obviously, like, this is aimed at men, it's a fantasy, or rather, it's aimed at teenage boys usually, it's a fantasy for them, it wouldn't really make sense for the main character to be a girl in that case. Number two, the magic school usually isn't a secret. There are exceptions to this rule, sometimes the magic school is, you know, hidden from society for one reason or another, but usually, usually these types of stories are a bit lazier with the world building, so it just takes place either in our world at some point in the future when magic has been just revealed to everybody, that's surprisingly common, or it's just in a fantasy world completely separate from our world. Like, the, those are both pretty common. Uh, they just didn't want to bother with making things secret. And on one hand, yeah, that is at least a little bit different, and I honestly prefer it, uh, but the world building for it is still super lazy, so it... I don't know, I just, something about it doesn't appeal to me, but that is very, very common. That is one of the main criteria for making a Magic Harem High School. Uh, number three, protagonist Kuhn is ludicrously overpowered. Like, I mean, I mentioned in The Dragon Conjurer how he discovers he can just summon more and more dragons depending on what language he speaks in. And maybe the later books will put limitations on that, but so far there's, there's nothing there. Uh, but... In all of these types of stories, the main character just has, like, some sort of power which is either completely unheard of or only heard about in Legends, and it just completely blows everybody else out of the water, uh, usually as long as he can learn to control it. Like, usually that is the one limitation that he has, at least at the beginning of the series, is that he can't control it very well, and so it doesn't do him a whole lot of good, and so as he learns to control it better and better over the course of the series that's when he becomes more dangerous. But even in cases where that's not the case, usually he has like just more magic power than anybody. So when it comes to fights, he doesn't have to be intelligent or anything. He can just throw more energy into his beam burst or whatever, and then he'll just defeat the bullies or he'll defeat the main villain or whoever else. Sometimes he's overpowered in a really weird way though. Like there's this one manga, I don't remember the name of it, I'm not going to look it up. If anyone wants to share it down below, feel free. But um, it was basically very similar to this, only instead of magic, it was sometime in the future and everybody had superpowers. Like, just imagine My Hero Academia, except a lot shittier. And the main character had a power to shoot, like, this weird goo out of his body. And it was actually not a bad power. It was, like, really sticky and it would capture people and prevent them from <clears throat> running away, but also wouldn't hurt them, but he could also use it to make, like, barriers and shields, or he could use it to make, like, a cushion when he falls from places. So it's actually a useful power. Uh, but the main joke... Please, please if, if you're in another tab, please note that I'm putting quotes around the word joke. The main joke is that the goo he shoots out kind of looks like semen, which, the first time you hear that, it's not funny, but I, I just didn't care much about it. But the second, third, fourth, fifth, twenty seventh times, it it got a bit old. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, that's the point I'm getting at is that sometimes in Magic Harem High Schools, the main character is overpowered in a really weird way. Like just I I don't know how to go into more detail about that. But things like things like the semen goo stuff like that just that's how they can sometimes be overpowered. Uh, now, sometimes this is played for a joke or for parody. 
like, oh crap, I'm forgetting the name of it again, but uh, there is this one anime which is making fun of this genre where the main character is like the reincarnation of a demon king, and so he has all the demon king's powers, and in the first episode he beats a guy up using the shockwaves from his heartbeat, and then he kills him and resurrects him a bunch of times just to teach him a lesson. It's, it's actually pretty funny. I'll put up the name if I can remember it. Number four, the main character has a harem, and by harem I mean there's just a bunch of girls that all are really into him for one reason or another, and they just they make it clear how much they want the D, but he can never actually date any of them because reasons. And the reason he has the harem is because he is a nice guy. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's about it. That's the only reason. Like, once in a while, there'll be a really stupid reason for why someone uh, is interested in him uh, and wants to have sex with the main character protagonist coon guy. Sometimes there's a reason for that. Like, sometimes, oh, okay, he has these crazy powers, that means our children will be really powerful, so I have to do this to bring honor to my family. That's a surprisingly common one, actually. Um, and other times it'll be like, oh, when I was a child, I was part of a put-upon minority, uh, a race of people or whatever in this world, and he helped me out one time, therefore I'm in love with him. Like, that. that's also a very common one. But most of the time it's just because, yeah, he has no personality, that allows the audience to project themselves onto him, therefore I really like this dude, and I'm in love with him, and I want his babies, etc. But at the same time, no one acts in a forward manner. Or, or at least they very rarely act in a forward manner. Like, none of them ever just come out and say, Hey man, um, I'm, I'm really interested in you. I think we should start dating. Like, I know all these other girls are there, so like, if you're just not interested in me, I'd be upset, but you know, can, are, are you interested in doing anything? Like, no one ever just does that. Number five, which is one of the most important ones, there are very few male characters. Like, other than protagonist Kuhn, of course, uh, there can usually only be two or three uh, other character or other male characters that take up a significant amount of time, let's say. Because uh, they can be, like, in the background or just be a goon that the characters defeat in two seconds and then move on. But they can't be, like, actual characters other than a couple of them. And they pretty much always fall into one of a couple of different archetypes. Like, there is main character's best friend, the main villain of the whole series, uh, a big bully that's at the school that the main character has to defeat to show off how cool he is. Usually he defeats him in, like, the first episode, or the first couple of episodes, at least. Uh, there'll be some sort of mentor, you know, someone who teaches either protagonist Kuhn or some of the other characters how to use their powers and how to fight. Uh, sometimes there's a school headmaster that's in there, and sometimes there will be a more minor villain who is a creepy rapist. Uh, now, obviously, some of these archetypes can be mixed and matched, and there is overlap between them, but usually if there's another male character other than protagonist Kuhn, he will very rarely fall into any category that isn't one of those. Like, in Dragon Conjurer, uh, protagonist Kuhn is in a team with four people, there's like himself, and then there's another dude who falls into the best friend uh, archetype, and then there's two members of his harem. And then his school headmaster is also a dude, and then there's a bully. And so I think they've actually hit their quota for male main characters, which means the villain has to be a woman for the rest of the series. Sorry, I, I don't make the rules. Uh, if anyone else wants to read it and check with me, I, I'm willing to bet money. That's what happens. Number six also very important, there can't really be a story. There just has to be short adventures. Adventures, I should say. Like in Dragon Conjurer, they go on like four or five different missions to like stop monsters and stuff over the course of the book. And it's not a long book either. Like I think it would have been served better if they had just cut out some of those and just made the remaining ones longer so they only went on like two missions. But okay, whatever, that's, that's not the important bit. But yeah, in this, and hell, for isekai stories as well, uh, there just isn't really a story at all. Like, there's not any sort of structure 
Uh, there's not any journey that the heroes are going on other than maybe some vague evil threat that's off in the distance. There's just the heroes do stuff now and again. Like sometimes they'll go on short little uh, adventures where they have to do a mission to stop an evil goblin or something. Uh, a lot of times it'll just be harem hijinks. Sometimes it'll be main character Coon showing up a bully. Uh, sometimes there'll be training, but there isn't like a main story that they're just like, yep, we're going on this quest to defeat the bad guy or anything like that. And it, it's kind of hard to go into more detail about how that works, but th this is one of those things that you kind of have to experience yourself to understand it, I think. But overall, yeah, if, if you doubt me, just check out basically any Magic Harem High School that's come out in the past, like, 15 years. They barely have any story. That's that's why The Irregular at Magic High School is one of my most hated anime of all time, because I, I watched, like, nine episodes and nothing happened, or... Rather, nothing happened that related to anything that came before or after. And number seven, this one is a more recent phenomenon, and it seems to have originated in light novels, but there has to be a really long, really dumb title. Now, I've heard that the reason for this is because when people are scrolling through just long lists of light novels, uh, they want to stand out a little, so they found a way to make it so that the title is also like a summary of the plot. So they wind up with really long names, like, Problem Children are coming from another world, aren't they? And, you know, that's a really stupid title, but it is eye-catching, I'll give it that. Like, Dragon Conjurer, that's honestly too short and too to the point. Like, it needs to have something really stupid and long. It needs to be something like, I just learned I can summon a dragon and now a fairy is sucking my cock. Or, thank god I'm an only child because if I wasn't you would probably try to put my sister in this harem. Or, you know, something like that. You know, but... Whatever, that's not the end of the world. The point is, a lot of these do have really long, stupid titles. And a lot of times, for whatever reason, the fan base refuses to use it, the English translation, so you wind up having to just sift through entire sentences of Japanese, which, yeah, okay, that's, that's, not, that's not important. The point is, those seven criteria are the main things that make a Magic Harem High School a Magic Harem High School. Uh, you can throw in some other stuff, too. Like, a lot of times it only lasts one season, and you never get any closure if you're an anime-only fan, so you have to go read the original light novel or read the original manga. But a lot of times, because they're not popular, nobody ever translates them into English, so if you can't speak Japanese, you're shit out of luck. And, uh, overall, Dragon Conjurer, I guess it it could be worse. Like, I, I, re I really do mean that. Like, I gave it two stars on Goodreads, because it's it's a bad book. Don't get me wrong there, but... It's, it's mildly competent in some ways, like, the people who made it seem to understand that, yes, it is dumb. And I will grant it that the audiobook is really solid. Like, you know, it's not just one narrator going over everything and doing all the character voices. Like, they actually got a couple of different people to come in and do them as well. So, like, the female voices aren't just a man trying to do a woman's voice very poorly. Like, it's, it's actually very well produced. I'll, I'll give it credit for that. And, um... Well, like I said, it seems to know it's dumb. It's there for wish fulfillment and people to project themselves onto. And I just, I don't know, I can't really bring myself to hate it, even though I really am not a fan of this genre. And I think that's because I do see potential in this genre, at least. Like, there are some entries I've read or watched over the years that I thought were fun. Uh, it's just, they, they are too similar to one another to the point where it feels like they're not even trying. And, uh... If you really want an in-depth look at uh, this genre, especially if you want to look at a particularly bad version of this genre and all of the problems that come along with it, uh, just watch the Asterisk War Sucks series by Digibro, who nowadays is known as uh, Beatrice the Golden Witch, I think. I'm sorry, I haven't watched her work in a long time. All I know is that she transitioned a little while ago. Uh, but she removed that from her own channel, so... I will just link to a different uh, upload of it, but it's a very long, in-depth look at this one season long, uh, or rather the first season, of a really terrible anime that fits into this genre, and it, it's just really good. It's a really, honestly, one of the best pieces of criticism I've ever seen, and it just goes into a lot more detail than I ever could in this video, at least without directly plagiarizing from her. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, <clears throat>
If you want more of me, then consider checking out my second channel. I just started it recently, but I'll probably be uploading more stuff to it as time goes on. Just stuff that doesn't really fit onto this channel. And uh, after this, I'll probably be doing a video on the Lightbringer series. Like, I have not uh, finished that one quite yet, but I'm very close to finishing it, and I do have some thoughts <laughs> overall, but, uh, you know, that's about it. See ya. Bye. Special thanks to everyone who watched this far, including and especially my patrons and channel members. My $10 and up patrons include Oppo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Christopher Quinton, Dan Antlis, Ants, Ants, Dan, Echo, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Micah Phone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Vey Victus, and of course, all the other names listed here. You guys are great. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. If you want to get your name put up here, then consider becoming a patron. You get stuff like early access to my videos. And if you don't want that, then how about maybe just becoming a channel member or dropping me a tip over on PayPal or just, you know, sharing this um, video. I just, you, yeah, you get the picture. Goodbye. Bye.